Howdy guys, it's Luke at Geek Gaming, and in this video I'm going to take you through how I built this super simple city fight board using minimal tools, minimal products to, to build a very achievable city fight board. So to start we'll build a lightweight gaming table, um, if you want to see how to uh, build this uh, check out my other videos on building lightweight gaming baseboards. I'll put it up in the top. So after cutting the wood and getting the board down, we're on to uh, the terrain. Now, cheating a bit, I found this on, I think it was Facebook or eBay about two years ago, and I paid naff all for it. I paid like 65 pounds for the lot. Um, and it's loads of MDF ruins, okay? As you've seen in the thumbnail, there's, there's a lot of it. Um, and it's not too bad. It needs a bit of work. Um, needs to, it needs a lot of work, um, but I think for the money, when stuff like this pops up, grab it guys, because you can do a lot with it. So I'm not entirely sure where this MDF kit stuff is from. If you do know, pop in the comments below, or if I find out, I will put a link to whoever the original manufacturer of this is. However, this is the cheapest possible way and quickest way of building a city fight board. I mean, you could build your own out of foam board, but there's a lot of time. I'm trying to make this as simple and as quick and as minimal as possible. Buying it second hand was great because obviously it was assembled. Um, I did think about leaving it modular. The only problem is I did try laying it out a couple of different ways and whichever way I did it, it looked pretty similar. So I thought, stuff it, stick it down. If when or however you're playing on this is always going to be pretty similar anyway. But it's going to be a fun table to play on. So this is the look and setting that I went for. Um, I like that there's plenty of roads for tanks and stuff to fit down, your knights, um, if you're playing bolt action, there's plenty of room for minis and everything on there as well. It's going to be great. So let's get some, let's get it destroyed, let's get it stuck down, and let's uh, get cracking. So to start off, we're using 5mm blue foam. This is underfloor insulation foam. Um, I think I bought four sheets for about £12 posted um, from Panel Systems, I think it was, or Pro Warm, one of them two. I'll put it in the links below. Simple to cut to size, just get a sharp, sharp knife and lay it where the buildings are. You don't have to do this step, but I'm just doing it to raise the buildings and the curbs, uh, paths a little bit more, just so it looks a little bit more defined. Once you've cut that out, just check to see that all your parts fit back where you've put them. Um, however, we are going for a completely ruined, destroyed board, so if, if your foam's a little bit undercut or overcut, don't worry too much about it, because you can hide it with rubble and grits and sands and stuff later. The whole point of this is just to add some height and elevation to the buildings, um, like it is in, in real life. However, this doesn't look that realistic. <laughs> We're going on with gator glue, this is a polyurethane glue. The reason I'm using this is just so it's quicker. Um, if you was wanting to save some money, you could use PVA, uh, but this saves you a hell of a lot of time. So polyurethane glue, wet the back of the foam, stick that down, 20 minutes, that foam's on there rock hard. It does expand, so weigh it down. Because there's plenty of buildings on there as well, the weight of the buildings will hold it down more than enough. Um, you could add some extra weights like bottles of glue and stuff if you want, but we've got quite a lot to do, so I'll just get cracking, and the buildings did hold it down. To glue the buildings in place, I went with just PVA glue. The reason for this is it was getting pretty late on. I thought, I'll just put the PVA glue on, and then the next day, it'll be plenty dry enough. So I just stuck all the MDF down to the foam using PVA. Never done it before, so I thought I'd try it, and it worked very well. Just apply that to the rest of the board. Right, so for certain bits and p places, I wanted not to have full ruined parts, so what I did is I ruined them more and just had some extra details by snapping the bits and pieces up and just sticking them in place. If it broke and fell over in my hands or like the struts or anything came off, just leave them on, we'll glue them in place as well. And I just did that with PVA glue, um, stuck them down, used a bit of glue to hold the buttress in place and away we go. We'll sort the proper securing of it later. So, I don't play much 40k, um, but, but I have heard that the bottom floor, there's no line of sight from the bottom floor. So I thought what I'd do, there's a lot of ruins, I'd just fill the bottom floors up full of foam. Now, 
the next step we're going to be using my modeling compound obviously um so i thought what we'd do is i build it out roughly and do it like this however if you are trying to save as much money as possible doing a board like this i would spend more time cutting the foam and shaping it with a knife and everything else however i just roughly did it and i used a, a, a few bags of compound to do this uh, but you'll see how much i'm putting down later I didn't bother gluing the foam together um, because I know that I'm doing the compound step later and it doesn't really matter because it'll hold it all in place. So I just put cocktail sticks in so when I am putting the compound on, it doesn't move around too much, that's all. Um, saves on glue and drying time. Now, because we were doing this cheap, I was using offcuts of foam. Um, I run out of offcuts and I found this. I, have, I bought it for another video and it never came off. It never worked as I wanted it to. Um, but it's closed cell um, polyurethane foam. It's very similar to the stuff you get in your spray can, but a lot harder and a lot firmer. It's it's far better than uh, sp spray foam, okay? I mix this 50-50, I give it a good spin round. It stinks like latex. Um, <laughs> it's got the really bad smell of ammonia. Um, but give that a good mix, and I just poured it into the middle. It was the last one that I had to fill up, and I thought, let's see if this works. I had no idea, but I thought, what have I got to lose? I've only got to slap some more compound off if it fails. But look at how much that expanded. It was absolutely mental, um, and it's it's super solid. Then all I did was glue in the grates and the manhole covers, and I just did that all over the board. Now on to the fun and messy part. This is using the Geek Gaming Scenics uh, modeling compound. Uh, this can be purchased from my store at geekgaming.co.uk. Um, what modeling compound is, it's a paper plaster pulpy mix. Um, and what you do is you add water to that and just throw it on all over the foam. And this is so we can get the nice ground forming to simulate the mass of rubble from obviously the top floors of the building. Slap this all over in a rough pattern, get it to sort of so it's filled all the areas in, and then just sort of start shaping it. Okay. The benefits to using this over clays and your standard fillers and everything else is it dries very quickly. Um, it can dry in up, up to like half an hour depending on weather conditions. It's very fast drying, which really improves your work speed and workflow. So if you're working on something small, it's awesome. If you're working on something big like this, just work in smaller areas, working on one building at a time. After about 20 minutes or so, it'll start to firm up and then you can start smoothing this out. Um, the reason we start to smooth this out is just so when we put the rub rubble on, it's got a glueable surface. Um, but everything underneath that, so all that foam and everything that we've just thrown down, will hold together and it will it literally turns to stone. It's awesome for wargaming because it just dries so hard and quickly. Now we're just shaping the sort of landform so it looks like space where all the rubble would take up from the top floor falling in. Uh, once you've got that how you want across the whole board, we'll move on to rubble. So rubble, we we'll just use casting plaster. Simply pour it in the bucket, add some water, two to one ratio. Give it a good mix till it's a bit like a slightly going off milk. Get out your trays, don't tell your mum. And simply just pour it onto your tray um, and just literally give it a good five to eight mil deep. I mean, depending on how deep your buildings are, just make it to the sort of thickness that your buildings are, you see, so it looks a bit like it's come from the buildings. However, it will look slightly different because they're just cheap MDF buildings. Now what I did to also improve the speed of this is once it started to turn, I put this in the oven for 40 minutes um, just to help dry it out completely quicker. Um, and then once I'd done that, I just popped them out the trays and got ready to have some fun with Jeremy. Right, so sticking this to the board, make sure you put plenty of PVA glue down. You want a nice thick coat of this so it bonds and adheres with it. Don't think about where you're putting this plaster at all. Spread the glue out everywhere, then grab your plaster and just throw it all over the place. Um, if any do stick up out, you know, like pointing up and gonna hinder play, make sure that you flatten them down or break them off. Just make it look as random as possible. 
Now, once you've put that down all over the PVA glue, what you're going to do is get another completely sodden wet through base of glue. Uh, so put this in a spray bottle and just literally soak the entire board through for the next step. The next step is just using a, a mixture of base readies, sharp sand, rocks, just get as much different size grits and dusts and sand you can and just blend this all together. Having it on top of the rubble as well really helps tie it, blend it, it just looks like just absolute chaos of rubble and mess. And that's what you want, just literally throw it everywhere, make sure there's no flat, bland looking terrain. Apart from on your road, leave a bit of the roads showing, uh, which will give you a nice look. And then once you've got that all over the place, just again, absolutely sodden this through. And repeat this step for every day for a week uh, till it's completely sealed in place. Once you've left that to dry, which should probably take another day or two, um, come in with a black spray can. I use four cheap black spray cans on this entire board, and I think they cost me about £2 each. Um, I could have painted it with a brush, but that would have took forever. Uh, but using spray cans is a very quick, easy way of doing it, and cheap if you can get them cheap enough near you. Just make sure you don't leave any white showing and get in, in the windows, and just make sure that every nut and cranny is covered. From that I go to grey, um, this is just a grey primer, it's a pound of tin and I used one <laughs> on the entire board. The reason I'm only using one and again a slight dusting is we're going to put snow on top so you want it pretty dark uh, so when the snow is on top you've got some nice contrast so it looks pretty cool. Um, and just give that as light dusting as I am now, concentrating on the higher areas which gives you that sort of dry brush finish but it's not took you any time at all um, and just repeat this all over the board. I do go in with a white and just do a very fine dust and I think I, I don't even think I used a quarter a can on this bit but it was just to accentuate and it did give it like a bit of a frosting finish as well like little white specks in areas which will help with the snow at the end to represent Stalingrad and two um, because we're doing a very basic job the snow will just make it hide a lot of the issues so we won't have to do any washing we won't have to mess around with weathering we can just snow this up and it'll look pretty good for minimal effort. That's the whole point of this board build. Minimal tools, minimal products, as quick as and as easy and as cheap as possible. So I'm using the Luke's APS Snow Powder, chuck some varnish on, any varnish will do, uh, and then dust it over. If you want any sort of splashing up the side, uh, concentrate on one side of the building, on every building the same direction. Uh, spray the varnish on and then blow the snow at it. Uh, it is very dusty, so I do advise wearing a mask. But if you wear a mask, you can't blow it at it, so use something like an airbrush. So I get asked by a lot of viewers and everything about doing a city fight, and what puts me off doing city fight boards is if if you want to build one you, we, we resin terrain, or if you want to do one using Games Workshop terrain, plastics, things like that, it's very expensive, okay? If you want to build it with MDF, it's still not cheap. I mean, a set like this was it's going to, going to easily cost 250 300 quid in in just MDF. I built this board with finding the MDF buildings cheaply for about uh with all the products and all my products and everything used at full retail price. I built the entire thing for I think it was 257, which is very cheap, okay, for a city fight board. You could make it cheaper, obviously, if you built all your buildings out of foam board and everything else, but that's going to take a lot of work. And also, you've got to have the skills and the tools to do it. Also, foam board's not that road. It's not strong. I, I mean, if you're building a city fight board like that, a couple of knocks and you're going to break bits off. Um, whereas the MDF ones are, are great for a club. They're great for roughing about. You know, they'll, they'll stand up to the test of time. And building a board like this that's very simple. I mean, I find this a very bland, very simple basic board but it shows you what is achievable using minimal products minimal tools and doing it as affordable and as cost effective as possible what do you think pop in the comments below guys uh, if you've liked it give it a like subscribe obviously and tell all your friends about me if you want to support the channel don't forget to check out my shop where you can buy all the products used well all what what were the three of them <laughs>
<laughs> you can buy all the products used in this video, uh, which really does help me out and supports the channel. Um, I do have Patreon, um, so if you want to just check out Patreon and see some Discord uh, things and stuff in there. Um, you can buy Games Workshop models and things like that from Element Games, uh, which are a, a massive uh, seller of Games Workshop and many other systems. And when you buy from them using the link below, I get a bit of a cut and that helps out as well. It, it funds me to do the builds like this. It's a bit of cash to, to throw into doing these builds for people. All right, guys, but thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you again for the next video. I'll leave you with some more footage of the gaming table completed. I'll catch you in a bit. Love, love, love.